Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. I'm sorry I missed you last Wednesday. Uh, we're having problems with uh, some of the data uh, as well as the website, and uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, until we begin a new series, which I'm not uh, ready, uh, absolute certain about, we're going to just talk about a few things that are of interest to me. I hope that they are of the same interest to you. I hope you find some benefit from this video, uh, but before I begin, I want to talk about the new website. Uh, as we moved into 2024, we've had some problems with uh, our web host. Uh, uh, I won't mention the name, uh, so we've moved to uh, to GoDaddy, uh, and so uh, we're going to keep our old website, but we're going to redirect uh, that that domain also to GoDaddy. And we've added the number one to Blessed Hope Forever, uh, Blessed Hope Forever One dot com. It kind of sounds like Blessed Hope for Everyone, and so that's what we've done. And you'll find a link to the new website in the description box. So I want to begin by just discussing a few topics that are of interest to me. Uh, several topics. And one is the fall and the new creation. Uh, Adam sinning in the garden, Adam and Eve, our first parents sinning, uh, which resulted in the fall uh, and the new creation. Now we cannot add billions of years to the Bible claiming that the creation days were uh, really long ages. We can't do that as Christians. Uh, that's a view that's often called progressive creationism. It, it's the, the argument kind of goes like, well, the earth is millions of years old uh, because the fossil records predate the biblical concept of sin. And of course, fossils are the remains of dead creatures. Therefore, uh, the logic would seem to go that millions of years infers that death predates sin which in turn suggests that death is not the result of sin. And dearly beloved, this makes God the author of death and suffering instead of, of, of the righteous judge who justly enacted punishment for sin. Creationism has destructive consequences for the gospel. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 19, and 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 21 through 22, clearly teach that human death came because of the fall. It even contrasts the death of the first Adam with the resurrection from the dead by the last Adam, Jesus Christ. Christ, Adam died, Christ arose. Now, how old was Adam when he sinned? That, that was, it's, it's always been an interesting question to me until just recently when uh, I found out nobody knows that because it hasn't been revealed to us. There's no way that we can know that. You know, we, no, we can't know how long that they existed in Eden before the fall. Many people have theories or they just make stuff up. But in truth, God chose not to reveal that to us. It would have been great if He had, I think. But, of course, it's great that He didn't. You know, besides the fact that, that age depends on actual aging, as there was no death and therefore no aging before the fall, Adam and Eve would have... Uh, perpetually been the age that they were created. which So the answer to the question, how old was Adam when he fell? Well, the answer is really zero. Big fat zero. All right, because aging would not have begun until they were expelled from, the, from Eden. So that's the answer to that question. Uh, in chapter 8 of Romans, uh, we, we read, for the creation was subjected to futility, not by its own will, but because of the one who subjected it 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. The curse fell on the entire creation, the whole creation, the entire universe as a result of the fall. Every part of God's handiwork was marred by the human uh, mutiny at the fall. At the fall, every part of, of creation was plunged into the chaos of sin and every part cries out for redemption. It is only the Christian worldview that keeps these two truths in balance. The radical destruction caused by sin and the hope of a new heavens and a new earth. Now, what's interesting to me is the fact that, that we as sinners were made a sinless new creation in Christ and dearly beloved, to me, that parallels this biblical reality. There'll be a new heavens and a new earth. Adam died, but life is the end result. A new creation, new heavens and a new earth. Same when it comes to our nature. The fossil record shows the very effects of chaos, cruelty, and corruption that came from the fall. It wasn't part of the good creation. Therefore, the fossil record must have come after the fall, which rules out millions of years. Instead, the globe-covering flood of Noah's time would explain many of the, the massive fossil deposits. When it comes to animals uh, and uh, death uh, and the fall, well, the Bible has something to say about that as well. The Bible clearly teaches that animals were not always being destroyed by cataclysms and they were not always tearing each other to pieces. This is shown by the diets that God originally instituted. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 29 through 30, clearly teaches that animals and people were both created Vegetarian. Vegetarian. Now I want to talk a little bit about Oumuamua. I had trouble saying that for a while. I've kind of got it down now. Oumuamua, the first interstellar object to visit our solar system. I think that has significance prophetically, and I'm going to tell you why. It was discovered October the 19th of 2017, just shortly after the Revelation 12 sign. Uh, in, in fact, it was actually, it was first observed September 9, uh, which is right close to Jesus' birthday, September 11, from Hawaii. So it was discovered and it was first observed the same month of, of the Revelation 12 sign. Who chose the uniqueness, the time, the, the place of observation, the name, Oumuamua, uh, the course, the, the trajectory, the, the length of observability? Who did that? Well, God did that. God did that. Uh, Muamua is heading toward the constellation Pegasus. I believe that's important. Uh, and it's now far beyond the orbit of Neptune. It is... It is path, passing through the Kuiper Belt, uh, you know, a, a ring of icy bodies near the edge of the solar system, and it's now beyond the reach of our telescopes. It will never come back toward Earth. Never. I, I'm going to say that with pretty dogmatically. I mean, it'll never come back. Uh, if it does, it'll be a long, long time. Now, there are others who say that it is coming back. That is not true. So Pegasus is where it's headed. That's the winged horse, literally the horse of the fountain, the winged horse, the messenger of the gods, the, the message from the gods of a great victory won. Uh, horses are either the symbol of, of those who would carry the message or the appearance of a horse in Scripture often heralds a message of pending judgment. Okay? Yes, I do believe this was significant. 
The true Pegasus, dearly beloved, is Christ returning victorious. And it zipped right past us. There weren't aliens on board. Uh, they didn't stop to say hello. You know, you'd think if they'd traveled that far, they would have done that at least. But, but no, this the, Revelation 19, I saw heaven open and, and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Okay. There are various translations, different variations of the Hebrew, but one of them is the Hebrew word markab for that. It means returning from afar. Uh, Shiat, Hebrew, who, who means who goes and returns. Uh, Pegasus in Greek and Latin is coming quickly, rejoicing, plentiful. That's, that's what it means. And 9 September was when it was first observed. The name comes from the Hawaiian word umuamua, which means scout. It's, uh, it's from u, meaning to reach out for, and mua, uh, reduplicated for emphasis first, in advance of, uh, in advance of uh, it's, so it's a compound word, and, and it reflects the way that the object is like a scout or a messenger sent from the distant past to reach out to humanity. God said that there would be signs in the heavens before His return. I think this mostly went unnoticed by the, the Christian watchman community. It was the first known object of its type, folks. A muamua presented a unique case for the International Astro Astronomical Union, which assigns designations for astronomical objects. It was originally classified as a comet, which... They classify it, you know, with the letter C for comet slash 2017 U1. It, it was later reclassified as an asteroid, so they had to change that to A slash 2017 U1 uh, due to the absence of a coma. Once it was unambiguously identified as coming from outside the solar system, then a new designation was created, and they actually had to create a new new designation. I for interstellar object, and that's the end of that. Now I want to talk about a little, a little bit about Trump. We've seen all those sevens. Most of you who follow this channel have seen a lot of that. There's a lot more coming, it seems. Seems like sevens just dogged this guy's heels. Seven months, seven days from Hamas attacking Israel October 7th, 2023 to Israel's birthday, May 14, 2024, which also happens to be Pentecost on, at TorahCalendar.com. Seven months, seven days from Trump's birthday, June 14, to him being possibly sworn in as president January the 20th, 2025. From also from Trump's birthday, 11 months, one day, 111, to Israel's 77th birthday, which is, which is in 2025. 70 days, April 8 eclipse to Trump's birthday in 2024. Trump was born seven days after Pentecost in 1946. Trump's birthday this year in 2024 is on the seventh day of the Hebrew calendar month. Now I could uh, really push this and go as far as to mention that Trump owns, uh, he currently owns six properties. Uh, he owns seven springs, at least it, I don't think he's sold it yet. It's a 28,000 square foot mansion on 200 acres in Bedford and, and Newcastle, New York. Trump was indicted on seven counts in the special counsel's classified documents probe, a stunning development that marks, really marks the first time that a, a former president has faced federal charges. So seven seems to dog this man's heels. And I do not think that all of that is a coincidence. You would be hard pressed to convince me otherwise.
we're excited really here at Blessed Hope Forever as we move forward into 2024. We have a lot to watch for, a lot to look at, a lot, a lot of work to do. We're, we're not done yet. And uh, we here at BlessedHopeForever.com are, and those that are associated with this channel, are very active in, in continuing to watch for signs of our Lord's return. Many would argue that there are none. I would really beg to differ. I would, I would say that, that, that uh, God is making His presence known in many ways. He's exposing evil. He's, the light is, is uh, waning, I would say. Uh, as far as the gospel goes, uh, I've talked a little bit about the, the subject of apostasy and how that there would be a departure from the faith. As we know, Scripture says there'll be a departure from the faith uh, as we near the Lord's return, when, we're, when we enter into that final phase of, of, of human history as it concerns the age of grace. This dispensation, this present age of grace, is going to end soon, and it's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. And this world is going to move into what is known as Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is roughly seven years. It's not exact, but uh, it puts uh, his coming right in the right time frame to where that it would be 2,000 years from when he was crucified to when he returns. I encourage you to keep looking up. Stay in the Word. It's the best place that you could possibly be. Pray for one another. Love one another as He loves us. His love never changes. You know, some of the things that I've talked about since 2017 is I guess at the top of that list would be the Gospel, divine election, uh, the dual-natured necessity, uh, the nature of the, of the old man, the new man, uh, both of those natures, which actually, as I pointed out, sort of parallel the fall of man and the, the creation of the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, our motive, which seems to be, or it should be love, but it's really, it's, it's, it's greater than that. Uh, not that there's nothing greater than love, but the, our love will often fail. Uh, our greatest motive, uh, I believe, to serve Him is just that the natural expression of the new man. It's uh, positive reinforcement. God graces us with truth. We respond uh, accordingly. Uh, faith's righteousness. Uh, it's the righteousness based on faith. Uh, all righteousness is of the Lord. Uh, we're looking at the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, Christ manifest versus human works. We talked about that. We talked about the purpose for trials. We talked about what true praise and worship is. We talked a little bit about the vine and the branches, which really, you know, speaks heavily toward who does the producing, uh, that it's God that's causing the growth. I've touched on the identification truths, how that we've been identified with Him in His death, burial, and resurrection, that we've died to six things, sin, self, the law, the world, Satan, and even death. I've talked about spiritual rest, resting in Him. Uh, that is our obligation, uh, our walk. Uh, I've spent a lot of time talking about His person, His work, uh, as well as the failure of Israel, as well as the, the failure of the modern day church. Uh, the fellowship, the scriptural imperatives, uh, which what appears to be law, that the Bible is not a book of instructions on how to live the Christian life, but it's primarily a revelation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. I've touched on free will. We've, we've looked at that. We've looked at, at, at positional righteousness versus practical righteousness or our position versus our condition. And I've spent an enormous amount of time trying to encourage you folks to, to take serious note of the first command ever given us in Romans 6.11, which is to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin daily. It is a daily activity. You should be off and running as soon as you're, you get out of bed every day and your feet hit the floor and you take off running. 
You should be reckoning yourself dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is that? It's because the flesh profits nothing. So many Christians out there, and this has one of, been one of my greatest burdens ever since I came to know the Lord. There's, there are so many Christians out there who are struggling with sin when God put the whole entire issue to bed. He crucified the old man. He does, he's not trying to clean up the old man. What he's doing is he's working in that sinless new creation that he's made you. It is a very difficult concept for Christians to wrap their minds around that they have been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Just as we see at the end of the book, God creates a new heavens and a new earth. But it, the fact of the matter is, is that if you are a Christian today, you have a sinless new, new man, a, a new nature, that can do nothing but righteousness. But it is not your righteousness. It's not credited. His righteousness is credited to your account. You stand before God, holy, blameless, unblameable, unreprovable. That's how you stand before God, even during your worst times or when you feel like an utter failure and you feel nothing but defeat. I want you to be encouraged as we go through the remainder of this year, as we continue to look for our Lord uh, and Him to return for us, I want you to, to take comfort in the fact that God loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son that who, whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are one of His sheep, you will believe. There's no question about it. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He came unto His own people, His own people, okay? He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Dearly beloved, life must precede belief. Life precedes faith, not the other way around, like you've probably been raised to believe. Again, I love you all. Rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.